Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to building an automatic battery cutoff circuit to prevent over discharge of rechargeable batteries in your design. And this will be part one in a two part series. And before I get started, I'll just mention, I'm gonna assume you have a basic understanding of rechargeable batteries or at least one chemistry type of rechargeable batteries and what their discharge curve looks like. I'm also assuming you have a basic understanding of MOSFETs and things like that. Uh, if you don't, you can always stop this video and quickly look it up if you need to. And I'll also mention, check out forstronics.com for the design and manufacturing services we offer. And I'll just remind you that those are for pay services. And then if you like what you see here, you know, please subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up on the video. All right, let's get started. Okay, why, do, why is over discharge bad? And why do we need an automatic cutoff circuit? When I say automatic, I mean a circuit that doesn't require any human interaction. It detects that the battery is too low and it stops current flow. And the reason it's really bad to over discharge a battery is, you know, depending on the chemistry of the battery, if you can picture its discharge curve, it's exponential. So, you know, it starts out at some fully charged voltage. The voltage slowly drops as you consume current. And then at some point, that voltage and that charge of the battery just falls off a cliff. And if you keep uh, draining current from the battery after you fall off that cliff, you can damage that battery's lifetime. It's how many times it can be cycled. After you charge it, you know, it, its charge will not be as high. And if you do it too deep, the battery basically is, is done. For nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium, they're pretty rugged batteries, but you can you know, basically reduce their lifetime. For lithium ion and lithium polymer, you can you, there's safety risks involved with over discharge. You can cause a fire. Now, my my application that I did this for is for nickel metal hydride battery, but this will work for other different types of battery types. So, for instance, a, a cell of nickel metal hydride, you know, its discharge voltage is about 1.1 or 1 volt, uh, and it varies on different chemistries, but We'll, we'll talk about the circuit and we'll talk about how to adjust it for your particular application. And the idea here is just to remind you is, you know, let's say you have a wireless sensor, you know, that's out in the field. When that battery gets too low, that device needs to shut off. Now, you could just do something where you put the microcontroller in a sleep state so it has very low current draw and that might work. But for other designs, you often need something to cut off the battery to a lower current level. And it's not easy because what you need to do is you need to actively cut it off, but you need to cut it off without using, losing, using current or using very, very little current. So that's the challenge, right? We don't have someone standing by the battery that can just flick a switch to open the circuit so the battery no longer drains. So that's the problem we're gonna to try to solve here. In part one, we'll talk about the circuit design, parts, you know, how it works, things like that. And then in part two, I'll order my PCB boards from PCB Way. I'll build up the circuit and I'll test it and I'll kind of discuss the results with you. So at the heart of our circuit is what we're going to use is what's known as a voltage detector IC, or sometimes it's called reset IC, sometimes it's called a supervisory circuit. But the idea is this circuit will monitor a voltage and once it crosses a threshold, it will provide an active low or at least typically an active low out to signal or control something. So in some cases, these are used to basically reset uh, you know, a microprocessor if the voltage, its voltage drops too low because you know, you don't want it running when the voltage drops too low because crazy stuff can happen. Or you can use it how we're going to use it for a battery cutoff circuit. And I just cut out two different block diagrams from data sheets. One's from TI, one's from a smaller company, Albic. But basically kind of show you from a high level how they work. So for our application, you know, VSS would be ground, VDD would be our battery voltage. And the way these work is they have an internal voltage reference that represents its threshold. And so when this drops below, when VDD drops below the threshold, out is driven active low. When it's above the threshold or comes back above it, then this sort of turns into a floating output. And the way it does it, and you can buy these at different threshold levels, right? 
But the way it does it is, you know, you have an internal op amp. The, the non-inverting side is tied to a voltage reference. And then VDD is tied to a resistor divider network that's tied to the inverting side. So as long as we're higher than the non-inverting side, this will drive this MOSFET low or this FET low. And since it's an end channel, it'll turn it off. But if the inverting side becomes lower than the non-inverting side, which is tied to this voltage reference, then this will be high and this N-type FET will turn on and this will have a path to ground, basically creating an active low out. Now, some of these other connections, CP and CN, they basically sometimes have this option where you can connect a capacitor to these pins. And what that does is it creates a delay when you cross above or below the threshold. And why you would want that, and I'll have that in my circuit, is in case you have a value that's close to the threshold and it bounces around, you don't want it turning on and off. So they, they put in these delays, I think they call it a hysteresis, so it doesn't, you don't get oscillations or it bouncing back and forth. And one thing I'll point out in this other block diagram from a, from a TI voltage detector is sometimes they can have a sense pin. So maybe you have a voltage level from a power supply, but, and, but you have another, maybe you want this voltage level to quote unquote power to design, but you have another voltage bus, which could be a battery or something else that's what you want to monitor. And so sense means, you know, your voltage that you want to monitor where and VDD would be the voltage to power the circuit. We'll use a voltage detector that just has VDD that serves as the power, which is going to be very low. And we'll talk about that. And then also is the, the level that we're monitoring. OK, let's look at the schematic for the circuit that I designed and we'll discuss it and I'll show it in Eagle, which is a, a software for designing circuits, but also for uh, doing PCB layout. OK, here's our schematic. U1 is going to be a voltage detector from Albic, which I'll, I'll show you a bomb at the end of the presentation. VDD is going to be my battery voltage. And this P-channel MOSFET is going to be controlled by U1, and I'll explain how. And basically, this is what turns on or turns off to prevent current from flowing out of the battery. Now, as we'll see, when this cuts off, it's not perfect. There's going to be a low amount of current that drains. Uh, but that's the goal here is to make that current as small as possible, not to over-discharge the battery until it can be recharged or changed out. Where my circuit might be different than your design is, I was designing this for a a battery backup system. So in my application, there's power, but if the power goes out, the battery drives this tiny motor to shut a valve in a power down state. That's why I have this diode here. So this diode basically makes sure current doesn't flow this direction unless this power supply is gone. Now, if you're working with a design where the battery is the only power source, you wouldn't need this diode and this would just represent your load. Okay, and the, another reason why I need this diode is because this P-channel MOSFET has a body diode that would allow current to flow this way. Okay, so how does this work? Let me go into a little more detail. Here's my voltage detector, there's VDD, that's the level I'm monitoring. This out is the active low that when the battery voltage drops below the threshold, this becomes an active low. When they're operating normally, they're sort of a floating value. So you have to pull it up, or I should say not always, but typically for the voltage divider, voltage detectors I've seen. You wanna make sure you use as high as possible a pull up resistor because when the battery does shut off, there is a tiny bit of current that flows through here. And so you want this to be as high as possible, but still provide enough pull up to keep this level high. And one thing I'll mention, this is sort of a test circuit. I'm, I'm trying it out before I integrate it into the design. So I'm gonna play around with this value to see exactly where it works and doesn't work to get as little current drain as possible. 
So we talked about VDD. Let's talk about this out. So if you notice, I have this con word. This means basically that this is connected to here because they have the same name. So even though it's not draw the physical connection, these two areas are connected. And basically what I have here is an N-channel MOSFET. So when the battery has enough charge and a high enough voltage, this is pulled up. The threshold in here is not, is not crossed. So this is high, this is high. This drives this N-channel MOSFET to be on. So it acts like a short, which in turn pulls this low. This is a P-channel. You know, P-channel and N-channel are opposite. So if we pull the P-channel low, it turns on because it's more negative than VDD. And so this be acts like a short. And what happens is when the threshold is crossed, my battery voltage gets too low. And for my application, I chose a voltage detector that's seven volts. That's because I'm using a nine volt nickel metal hydride battery, which has about seven cells in it. And the absolute discharge voltage of, this, of the cell is about one volt. So seven times one is seven volts. So once that threshold is crossed, then this becomes an active low tied to ground. And this becomes low, this is low. So now Q1 is the same as the source. It's not more positive. So this end channel shuts off. This acts as an open. And you notice I have a pull up resistor here so that this is the same value here, not more negative. Therefore, this is off. So this cuts off the current for our circuit. And as I mentioned, CP and CN are the hysteresis. So if I put these capacitors here, and I don't have the spec in front of me, you can look at it, the data sheet, but it basically adds you know, uh, tens of milliseconds delay when one of the thresholds is crossed. Now, one thing I wanna be clear on is where are, where's the pass for current to drain? Well, here it can drain here because we have an active low. Now remember, when we looked at the voltage detector, there is a resistor divider network. So this pull-up resistor becomes part of the series of that resistor divider network, and that's where you get a tiny bit of current flow. You also could have a tiny bit of current flow here, but typically these MOSFETs shut off pretty well. So that's pr typically pretty small. Just to give you an idea, let's say that your battery is just about fully discharged, but let's just say it has, I don't know, 25 milliamp hours left, right? So let's say 25 milliamp hours. But this path, when you cut off the circuit, quote unquote, cut off the circuit, is allowing, let's say, 1.5 microamps to flow. So if we divide 25 milliamp hours by 1.5 microamps, so let me do that, divided by 0.00125. So even if our battery is almost all the way discharged, as long as we have a little bit of charge left, we have we created some time for ourselves. So this is how many hours we have left before it gets in the critical area of discharge. So if this is hours, let's divide the hours by uh, 24 to turn it into days. And then let's divide that by 365 for a year. So that basically means if even if we allow our battery to discharge, this cutoff circuit will give us about 1.9 years before it fully discharged. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the current so low to the point where the battery is discharging so low that we have time to either charge it or you know take it out or something so it doesn't get damaged. That's the goal here. All right, let's before we wrap up, let's look at the bomb. So this is the voltage detector I chose from Ablick. I maybe was saying their name wrong. I'm not familiar with them. I think this is one of their specialty areas, but A-B-L-I-C. This is the model number. Notice in the model number, they have seven zero. This stands for seven volts and they sell it at different voltage values. So keep an eye out. They also have a sense option. They have a hysteresis option. And that's why this model number is so long for selecting what you want. The P-channel MOSFET, I had to be, I wanted to make sure I chose a P-channel MOSFET that had a very low RDS on or, or resistance across from, from um, 
drain to source. So I chose this one, which has about 10 milliamps, or it's not 10 milliamps, excuse me, 10 milliohms, because I don't want a lot of my battery to be dropped across that and wasted across the, the P-channel MOSFET. So that's, that's the only criteria I had for it is make sure it can handle the current that, uh, that the circuit will pull and make sure it has very low re on resistance. For the MOSFET, for the N-channel MOSFET, you, you know, you can use general purpose ones. I use the, the common uh, BSS-138. And there's various manufacturers that make it. There's, I have a shot key diode, if you remember, because I wanted to stop the, uh, the main power source from flowing to the battery. And basically I use a shot key diode. A shot key diode basically means a diode that has a very low voltage drop. Once again, if you're just using the battery to power the whole circuit, then you probably don't need this. I had two uh, 3.3 nanofarad ceramic capacitors to do the hysteresis on the voltage detector. And the, where I got this value is from the data sheet. Once again, the reason I know how to use a voltage detector is because I read the data sheet. For these resistors, I sort of have approximate values. That's because I'm gonna play with the values to get as high as possible to prevent current drain. Okay, that's it for part one of building an automatic battery cutoff circuit to prevent over discharge of rechargeable batteries. In part two, I'll get my boards from PCBWay, I'll build them up and we'll do some tests and some performance checks on the circuit. If you have any questions or comments related to the video, please use the comment section below and thank you for watching.